Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Drop. Greg Wyshynski, Ardo Cal. Thank you very much for joining us on the NHL on ESPN YouTube. Happy belated Halloween, especially to Joshua Jackson, uh, who mailed in his Halloween costume and nobody cared, Greg. Well, you know, the man played a mighty duck. He also played, obviously, Pacey and a naked guy on the affair, but he was a mighty duck before that. <laughs> And, and he, he dressed as his role. Now, the big news here beyond uh, Joshua Jackson, you know, mailing it in for Halloween is the fact that Adidas Arda has now made Mighty Ducks and Hawks jerseys for people to buy and purchase and wear on their own. And I got to say, like, the Mighty Ducks jersey looks pretty on point. Looks like the kind of um, knockoff jerseys you've been able to get uh, through <laughs> various What are you talking last... about? I don't know well, what you're talking I about. I don't know. Uh, last 25 years. The Hawks jersey, though, dude, like the Hawks definitely wore this jersey in the Mighty Ducks movies. I remember Gordon Bombay as a kid wore this jersey, but I remember they also had kind of like a banner logo that went across the front as well, which I kind of dug. So I don't know. I'll wait for the Hawks reverse retro, maybe, and then get the Ducks jersey now that Adidas is making it. It's funny. It just says Hawks, and it's like that is the reverse retro that the Hawks are doing <laughs> right now in a way. Anyway, uh, Mighty Ducks Game Changer is obviously available on Disney+, Plus, as are all the original movies and all the Mighty Ducks. Even the animated series is on Disney Plus. But yeah, it's a cool collaboration. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where it goes. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. The Mighty Ducks are awesome. I think we all love the Mighty Ducks. The Flying V is offside. That's yeah. a conversation for another day. But Mighty Mighty Ducks cartoon, by the way, uh, give me gargoyles over that as a kid growing up watching wow. it on the Disney block. Uh, was never really a Mighty Ducks cartoon guy. We're going to start things off on this episode of The Drop with a new segment called Chill Out or Freak Out. I'm going to present <laughs> us a statement uh, that's some, that has something to do with what's happening in the NHL right now. And we will determine, Greg, whether people and ourselves, whether we should chill out or freak out. Right. Number one, the okay. Toronto Maple Leafs are going to miss the playoffs. Chill out or freak out? I'm going to chill out about the Leafs playoff chances because I do believe in this team. I think they need to get a little bit healthier. Kyle Dubas may be using some of that cap room that he should have from Jake Muzzin being hurt to go get a defenseman. But I'm absolutely freaking out for Sheldon Keefe right now. My man is in trouble. They've got a stretch of games coming up against the likes of Vegas. The Penguins are coming up. The Bruins are coming up. The torturer of the Maple Leafs franchise, the Boston Bruins. I feel like the pressure cooker is getting so turned up in Toronto right now. And you know what I'm talking about as a Canadian, that I feel like Sheldon Keefe, uh, his job might just melt down in the torrid temperatures of the Toronto media if they don't make it through this stretch okay. Especially, dude, with Barry Trotz floating the idea of like, oh boy, I'd love to coach an original six team. Gee, I wonder which original six team might be in the want for a coach in the near future. So chill out on the Leafs, freaking out about Sheldon Keefe. I love the idea that there's even like fabricated rumors. I don't even know how true this is, but I love how there's news reports out there that Barry Trotz has already either rented or bought a condo in Toronto. He's ready to move. Let's just get it going here. Listen, when Barry Trotz, when, if and when Barry Trotz picks up that job in Toronto, they pick up a goalie like Flurry at the deadline after the <laughs> Wild are missing the playoffs. All of a sudden, the Leafs have gotten all their demons exercised in the, uh, their playoff demons are exercised in the regular season this time as opposed to the first round and all of a sudden they're cruising so listen if the hardships are coming now I say Toronto fans chill out because you'd much rather be in pain now in October and November than in April and May and June hey look honestly Ilya Samsonov hasn't played all that poorly um but you're right like you know the Barry Trotz thing's very interesting I think if they do fire Sheldon Keefe there's only two places to go which is Barry Trotz or Mitch Marner's dad, which whichever one mm. you want to go with, I think they obviously have the best interests of the Leafs in mind. That was one of my favorite spirit Halloween costume memes, by the way, the goalie dad, where it's like from the back and he's wearing like all baggy stuff. He's right at the glass. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, the Blues going to miss the playoffs. I'm going to say freak out on this one. GM Doug Armstrong already having a meeting with the players. He's saying this team lacks competitive edge. They're easily frustrated. They're currently sniffing around the basement of the league in terms of point standings. The coach isn't going anywhere, not necessarily landing on chief on credit. 
Craig Berube here, but this team right now, uh, it's, it's, it, it seems unfamiliar for blues fans what's happening with them. So for me, maybe not five alarm just yet, but a little bit of a freak out, freak out. Oh yeah. Greg, what say you? Well, for, it's a chill out for me because I said the blues wouldn't miss the, the, the blues would miss the playoffs. So obviously I'm, I'm like, I'm maxing and relaxing right now. I made a good pick. Uh, it's a freak out for everybody else because look, I didn't know that David Perron was the thread you pull to unravel the sweater offensively, but apparently <laughs> so. They went from an offensive juggernaut to being last in the league in goals per game right now. So I listen, it's the wrong conference to not have your stuff together early in the season. I fear for them. I fear for the national predators. The West is going to be a beast in a lot of ways. So I, if I'm the blues, I'm freaking out right now. And frankly, I'm freaking out about the future too, because if things don't go well this season, now all of a sudden you're looking at what's the future of Ryan O'Reilly with the team. He's got the captain C curse Arda ask David Backus and Alex Petrangelo about it. What happens with Tarasenko? This could be a real critical season for the blues afterwards, even if they don't make the playoffs. See, that's the thing with Tarasenko too. Remember that whole deal where he wanted to be traded. He didn't get traded. Then he had a great season. He was performing well. And now if the blues, are going to be regressing. We might get that conversation back in public again. And Tarasenko, you know, those feelings might be bubbling up to the surface and that might add to the quote-unquote distractions. So that's a very good point about the Blues. We'll see where that goes. The Avalanche must trade for a center immediately. Chill out or freak out? This is a freak out for me. Alex Newhook, maybe not ready for prime time. JT Comfort, nice player, not your second line center. You know, this is a team that right now is struggling offensively, which we don't normally see from the Avalanche because Gabe Landis Cog is out of the lineup and because they're trying to figure out how to make things work without Nas and Kadri there, both offensively and with all the intangibles that he brings. Meanwhile, Calgary, outside of when they play the Kraken, doing pretty well with Kadri as one of their centers. So it's a freak out for me. I, go out and get yourself a center. Maybe they've got to wait for Jonathan Taves to figure out what he wants to do a, a post Blackhawks to get him to play in back of Nathan McKinnon, which I think is an ideal situation. But I'm freaking out a little bit right now about the second line center spot for the Avalanche. I have a Taves thought, but we'll save it for a little bit later on in this segment. Spoiler alert. Listen, you're absolutely <laughs> right about New Hook. And remember, I thought the leash was long for New Hook, right? Like at the before the season started, the conversation was New Hook is going to get ample time to to settle into that second line center role. He's got one point. JT Comfer has one point. Like the, the, the concern is certainly mounting, but the only reason I'm saying chill out is because, well, Nathan McKinnon. And honestly, I don't see this team as a team that's going to miss the playoffs. I think that even despite the fact that they have that center depth concern early in the season, I don't think this is a team that's going to be freaking out over it. And not only that, I don't think anyone should be freaking out over it. I think they can wait and bide their time and see what the center market becomes and find themselves a center, uh, including the name you suggested there, which might fit very well on an avalanche team like this. So by now I'm like, be like my mom and buy Christmas presents in September. Like, just go early, get into the market early and get your guy to wow. wait for deadline prices. Who does that other than your mom? Who on earth buys Christmas gifts? Oh, By the way, Chris, Christmas decorations in the mall before Halloween is over. Stop <laughs> that. Stop it. My mom, my mom literally has all of her shopping done by like Labor Day. It's great. Another three years of mullet arena really isn't that bad for me. I'm freaking out, but I'm using that term differently than let's freak out about the fact that we're at mullet arena. I see a lot of potential in this. I'm I'm using the term freak out specifically to the student section, that 400 or so fan base in that one area. We will never see a student section in the NHL that close to the ice, right up against the glass, that kind of ticket pricing. I want them to freak out every single game. I I want them to become the heartbeat of the Coyotes home fan base. I want them to create chants. I want to see crazy things like TIFOs and dance lines like you saw when you were there. We'll talk about that in a second. I want to see mullets and costumes. I want to see them having a great time. They have a large sandbox to work with. And the fact is, take a cue from college football. Take a cue from other college sports and how vibrant they are from the opening song all the way to the final whistle. Get that vibe in Mullet Arena and it'll start with the students student section. So I'm saying chill out on the fact that we're there for another couple of years. I think the potential is high, but student section, hear my plea, freak out, freak out, freak out in your section because we want to see it on the broadcast. And by the way, the social media teams will love you too. Yeah. We're going to talk about Mullet Arena a lot on this show, including later on our round table. But I got to tell you that when it comes to the student section, Arda, 
uh, unless some of those are like grad students or maybe people going back to get their degree. I don't believe they're all students. In fact, I talked to some Winnipeg fans who bought student section tickets without even knowing it was the student section. So I think some of that percentage of fans may not necessarily have ASU student cards in their pockets when they go to these <gasps> games. For me, it's a chill out though. Now, granted, you got one thing wrong. It probably is going to be four years in Mullet Arena based on okay. what we know about how this vote's going to go and everything. But that being said, it's a means to an end. Four years in purgatory to get to the heaven of a new arena in Tempe that's going to keep the Coyotes in Arizona in perpetuity. I think it's a worthy uh, cause and a chill out for me. Yeah, four years, whatever. However many years it is until the new arena comes, the student section can be seen favorably in history if they do their part for the next X amount of years for whatever it is. The Blackhawks blowing the rebuild. Oh boy, Greg, freak out or chill out. I'm freaking out, man, because, you know, we should have <laughs> listened to Luke Richardson when he said this before the season. He said they're going to be a tough team to play against. They're not going to be a pushover. He's going to make GM Kyle Davidson's job difficult by not being a tank team for Connor Bedard. And lo and behold, dude, they're tough to play against. Maybe they're not pulling a w is every night. They're a tough team to play against. I'm freaking out a little bit for our friends in Chicago, who I thought were destined to get one of these top three picks and a franchise altering player. But I'm not I'm not convinced of it now based on how Luke Richardson has his team playing. Patrick Kane, nine points. Jonathan Taves, eight points. Basically, congratulations, Patrick Kane, going to the Broadway Blue Shirts and Jonathan <laughs> Taves over to the Colorado Avalanche. That's center depth. Listen, all I'm saying is this is crazy. No one predicted this. And I don't know if I'm a team. This is all I'm saying. If I'm a team with the paradigm that I want to tank. I don't think those two players, I think I'm having conversations and saying, listen, maybe it's time to, uh, to, right. to to move on here. Maybe it's time that we find a new team and get pieces back and whatever the case may be, because uh, so far, so bad in, ter in terms of the Blackhawks tanking hopes. Yeah, they're ruining it. Get them out of there by American Thanksgiving. And I say American Thanksgiving out of deference to you, Arda, and, and many of our viewers. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's very, very kind of you. Greg Wyshynski earlier on had a chance to catch up with uh, one of the members of the San Jose Sharks. Very interesting. He's done a lot of cool things in his career and also off the ice. Tomas Hurdle. All right, joining me now, Tomas Hurdle of the San Jose Sharks star, a wonderful man, joins us here on The Drop. And sir, I wanted to ask you first, your team played in Prague. It's home territory for you. When, when your team comes and plays in Prague, do you have to become like an ambassador? Are you the one like making restaurant selections and stuff? How much pressure on is there on you to make the Prague experience good for your teammates? Uh, honestly, it was a lot of pressure. I was kind of nervous, you know, because you want to show them all the best part. And it was kind of quick, but for sure I was, you know, I set up team dinner and a guy, guy's been asking when they have family where to go. And I think everything was like actually so really surprised about the Prague, about the food, about the beer and and I think, you know, it's everybody, you know, after the trip, say it was amazing, you know, food and the city. So I was really proud of it because it's, you know, my hometown, my city. And and you want to just show all the good sides. And I think it was a really cool experience. And, you know, and I really enjoy it. And, and you know, probably never for, forgot, like, you know, bring an NHL team to my hometown, show them, like, good places, city. And, and you know, play kind of oh, in front of my fans, you know, kind of thing. Well, man, yeah, and your fans are there, right? Like, what was it like competing? I think you scored a goal, too, like, in front of your your, your countrymen there. It was kind of a cool experience, for sure. It was super cool because uh, I used to play in that building, you know, before I got NHL, I played for two years pro hockey in that building, you know, so I was kind of, kind of homecoming after 10 years, you know, when I started playing hockey and, and played there again after 10 years NHL hockey game. So uh, I bet there was a lot of games there, a lot of people that used to watching me, you know, when I was playing in Slavia, Prague 10 years ago, when I was still like a little kid and I'm coming after 10 years with, you know, San Jose Sharks to the Prague. There you go. All right, let's talk about the Sharks. Uh, many of us are wondering um, about your teammate, Eric Carlson, uh, who apparently is uh, has de-aged by 10 years and has got a point per game defenseman again <laughs> somehow. What has gotten into that man? What What is going on with Eric Carlson to start this season? I think, you know, he's, you know, real, first thing, he's real healthy and he just, he got confidence, you know, he feel great and, and it's fun to watch him on the ice right now. Every time he's on the, on the ice, you know, something will happen, you know, it's make you play and, or score goal, but it's, uh, he was all over ice and he was for sure our best player so far this year and, and he's, he's playing amazing, you know, he, 
Uh, he just show it like he's just smart. He don't have to be hardest shot. How he score, he just find it. He just wait for the moment, make a couple of fake moves, and he just put in good places. But he still make a lot of lot of play, play plays. Nobody can do in NHL. That's why he went twice, you know, Norris Trophy, and and he was for a lot of years best defenseman in NHL. And it's really fun to watch him right now. And and he's play like really really well right now. So hopefully we can help him. Me and other guys could help him out because you know he's he's you know on on the heat right now. You, how do you view the Sharks this season? I mean, you got a lot of veteran guys there yourself and and Logan and Eric and Timo and a bunch of others, and and then you've got like a lot of younger guys. And you know, do you see it more as as a as a retooling year? Do you see it as a year where you guys can still contend in the Pacific? How do you view the Sharks this year? Uh, you know, it's pressure doesn't like if you look to the standing, uh, maybe not looking great, but you know, it wasn't one game from 12. We lost by like 5 0 5 1. We've been always right there, like one goal behind it. And we just, you know, kind of shoot us, us to the foot this year because we have like three games. It's like, you know, 3 3. And last minute, we give up goal, you know, and we lost a lot of important points. If, if we don't, you know, stay one, one minute, you know, just don't make it that mistakes. You know, we will have way more points right now. And I think we play some really good hockey against really good teams. They've been here, you know, like Toronto, Tampa, Vegas. But so far, I think most of the games have been even better than them. But we just, you know, lost last minute, you know, goals. And that's sort really of hurt us. But, you know, it's a little different year. And I think, you know, we can still do better. We can still fight for the spa. And, you know, because I think we got the core, like, strong guys and you know we have to still lift up for sure our game and we got some young guys they stepping up but you know i think we got for sure better in our game and we can fight uh you know all all the way to the end all right all right so 2019 it's your wedding your teammates at one point take off their shirts and do a conga line and sing baby shark <laughs> and so my question to you is was that your best wedding present <laughs> no no i i was just happy like you know like guys come to my wedding you know it's it's not easy to do you know when i have to fly off half the country you know for for my wedding so i was really happy they come but i feel like it's i don't know if it's just every hockey wedding but for sure back home i was on every uh wedding you know hockey wedding it's always t-shirts out after you know 1 a.m or 2 a.m and it's the drinks coming up so it's always happen and you know i just be kind of funny and I, I, there was no one person in the group even if it was like grandpa grandparents everybody want to be in the line and dancing so it was really fun time and <laughs> and uh, you know i still sometimes watching the video because i think it was really cool it's incredible finally i understand that growing up you were a pokemon guy i remember reading something that said pokemon was the show that you used to watch the cartoon you used to watch growing up so tell me you got a fight in front of you which Pokemon are you picking to fight on your behalf? <laughs> uh, I always, you know, when it was the first season and it was like, he, when he was pick up the Pokemons, I always like, you know, like Charmander. So I would go with the Charizard. I always like the fire type. So, uh, so I always was, you know, really, I want this Pokemon, you know, if it's, if it's real, get in fantasy, I got dream and I, I can pick Pokemon. It'll be, you know, Charmander. And when he evolves all the way to Charizard. You know, Kevin LeBanc on your team said uh, he would take a Lapras, which I thought was very interesting, which is That's a kind a of break, a yeah. large That's a, like, Pokemon. Like kind of like legendary Pokemon, you know, in the, in the movie. So that's a that's a not bad thing, too. <laughs> well, Tomas, you're the best. We appreciate you coming on the drop and best of luck this season. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Tomas Hurdle for joining us here on the drop. Time now for the search for merch. This is where we put an open call out to every team in the NHL. Honestly, anybody associated with hockey, send us your stuff, anything you want to promote, anything unique that you have created that we can wear or put in our backgrounds. Of course, there's going to be a donation part of this as well, but we want to promote what you are all making. And really, Greg, you were in Arizona on Friday for the Mullet Arena grand opening for the Arizona Coyotes, and everyone saw them on the seats. The Mullets, baby. And that's why, baby, I bought back my mullet. <laughs> Look at the party in the back that is my face and head right now. Look at this. This is what the Coyotes gave all their fans 
at the opening game at Mullet Arena. Now, the, for me, Arda, like the party needs to stay in the back. You need to do a classic kind of mullet situation here. Many people decided to kind of like go like this, which gives it sort of this like Cindy Brady look, which I don't quite believe is <laughs> true in the spirit of the mullet. So I'd keep the party in the back. And this is what they did. Uh, go Coyotes go on the front in the back. It says you do you. It is by far the leader in the search for merch uh, uh, race right now, I think. Um, and it's a cool deal, man. Like, I wish they'd give these out at every game. They gave it out at the home opener, and uh, I dig it. How do I look? Do I look like uh, I should be uh, in, in leg warmers right now from the 1980s or what? You look ridiculous. Thank you. That's my goal in life. <laughs> Fitting, actually. But, but here's Fitting. The thing about I like, like the, the brown so hair at I, the top, blonde in the back. Anyway, I know. But you were there, so what was it like? It's like a black and white cookie. Look, I, I thought Mullet Arena was a ton of fun. I think what you're going to hear from fans that attend games there, it, it, it's like nothing they've been able to witness. So if you think about how many times you get to see an NHL game in front of like 4,800 fans, it's usually when the NHL goes on one of those preseason barnstorming tours and, hey, I'm in Saskatoon and I get to see the NHL come to my town. And then it's usually like, the AHL players are playing like this is NHL superstars in a small building where every seat feels like you're in the lower half of the lower bowl. And it's awesome, dude. Like it's really, really fun. Um, like you said, the atmosphere needs to be a bit more hype for my liking. I felt the student second did okay. I want to see it loud and crazy, but as Nick Bukestad of the Coyotes told me that's on them, that's on them to make an environment to make those fans go nuts and make it a cool home ice advantage. But here's the thing also about home ice advantage, Arda. Um, Nate Schmidt of the Winnipeg Jets told me an interesting thing, which is when the players come into that building, um, now granted, they're distracted right now because they're playing, they got to dress in a temporary locker room that looks like something Nathan Fielder built for the rehearsal. Um, that'll be done in the next couple of games. They'll have proper facilities and they come back in December. But Nate Schmidt told me that when the visiting teams come in to mullet, um, they're, they're, they need a few periods to adjust to how small it all feels you know there's no upper deck there's no mezzanine it's just kind of like a lower bowl everything feels very tight and it, you might want to take a look at how teams perform early on in these games because they're they're having a hard time adjusting to how close and enclosed everything feels and that might actually be a home ice advantage for the coyotes going forward and not only that, but uh, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois said it after the home opener game in a post-game interview that it was the best ice in the NHL. And oh, it's awesome a lot ice, of people, yeah. yeah. And the and, and a lot of players were saying that the boards were very lively as well. So we could see uh, a, a, a complete, at least in terms of minutia, we could see a different game out there. Uh, the puck bouncing off the boards in abnormal ways and, and the ice being fantastic there. Like, to me, that's a great, like, that's what I was talking about with the student section. There's going to be a lot of traveling fans. Let's be honest. Like yeah. the Rangers game was a perfect example of that. We saw a lot of Rangers games in attendance yeah. there. And you even saw Jets fans in the student section and they didn't, they didn't even know they were there. Right. Like right. You, you mentioned that, like we're going to see that. So that's why I feel like it's on the student section to be the lifeblood of this crowd, because we, we may not see this kind of opportunity again. Usually when it's discounted sections or student sections, they're picking the cheapest section in the upper bowl. So you yeah. never get to see them on the broadcast. <laughs> right. Right? right. So, right. so this is a unique opportunity for them to really, really own it and take advantage. So overall a good experience though. I think it was a fun experience. I, I okay. think all the Canadian fans uh, that'll invade that arena inevitably when their teams go and play, there are going to have a ton of fun. If you get a chance to go, Tempe is a great city, much better than Glendale. And, uh, and I think you'd have a good time. The tickets are pricey though, dude. Like I was talking to some Coyotes mm -hmm. season ticket holders that are now having to pay well over a hundred dollars for the cheapest seat in the place if they're not a student. Um, but that being said, I talked to a guy that was never a season ticket holder in Glendale now is able to ride his bike to Coyotes games at ASU, and now he's a season ticket holder. By the way, should mullets be this itchy? Like, I'm, I'm, it's very, very scratchy on my neck. The only time in my life I ever had a mullet was like six, fifth or sixth grade. My hair was long in the back. It curled underneath a little bit, curled underneath a little bit, but I never had this full, you know, Hemsworth Thor thing going on in back of me. It's a little itchy. I don't know. Yeah, I would never about. want hair that long on the back of my neck. So like, I'll take your word for it. I'm not, no, never uh, time for reader mail. We always appreciate the questions that you sent to us at Wyshynski at Arda. Here's a question from Reed. What is wrong with the Columbus blue jackets? Great question. Wish what's going on in CBUS. Well, I have a little bit of a trivia question for you, Arda. Uh, there's one team in the National Hockey League through its first 10 games that has yet to score a single power play goal. Can you guess who it is? 
I'm going to guess the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's correct. They're yes. over 25 on the power play so far this season, which is one symptom of some of the offensive issues that they've had with that team. Obviously, they were missing a little bit of firepower with Lonnie out of the lineup early on. Um, they're still getting acclimated to Johnny Gaudreau. Um, look, I, I think this is a long-term play for them, right? Gaudreau is signed for a number of years. They've got a, a number of good young players that are only going to get better. I didn't really think they were going to level up this season, even with Johnny Hockey there. But I also thought that with Johnny Hockey there, that, you know, maybe a, a power play goal by game 10. But that's clearly that and the goaltending issues they're facing, I think, are the problems right now in CBUS. I thought you were going to quiz me with name a team that hasn't had a winter classic or an outdoor game yet. Uh, oh. And I believe Columbus is also an answer to that. They uh, are their answer, as they, as I believe the uh, the mulleted Coyotes. Yes, the mulleted Coyotes. Three seven and zero oh, six points, bottom of the Metro. And uh, speaking of Patrick Line, they play next in Finland in the Global Series. That should be an interesting atmosphere. Moving on, and Themius, I apologize if I said that wrong. Says, what happens if the re speaking of the Coyotes? What happens if the referendum for the new Coyotes Arena in Tempe? comes back as a no, what happens? So we assume it's going to be a referendum. Um, there's going to be a vote next month by the Tempe City Council. They're expected to not necessarily approve the arena, but then kick it to the voters. Uh, everybody I talked to down there is pretty optimistic about the voters eventually approving this Tempe Arena project because the team is going to foot the bill. There's a little bit of skepticism about like, oh, okay, you know, what do we actually have to pay for it? But the team is going to pay the majority of the money to build this thing. And it's already land that the taxpayers are funding anyway. So the thought is, okay, they're going to approve this thing. If they don't, I've talked to the Coyotes about this. I'm like, what if Tempe doesn't work? And their answer is there are always other options in Arizona. I don't know what they are. But if there's one thing we know for sure, Arda, is that the NHL, as long as there is somebody who wants to own this team, and Alex Morello does, and as long as there's some place for this team to play, and right now they're at ASU for the next four years, they're going to stay in Arizona. It's when nobody wants to own them, they're losing a ton of money, and there's no place for them to play, that they're going to relocate them. And right now they uh, only satisfy one of those things because they're going to lose a ton of money. At <laughs> at at least no, matter, no matter how much they're charging for tickets, there's like 4,800 fans and like three concession stands and nobody's mm -hmm. paying for parking. So you tell me what kind of revenue they're actually pulling at ASU. At least the quote was there's plenty of options in Quebec City. I'm glad that the <laughs> quote was there's plenty of options in Arizona. Uh, the next question comes from Paul. What living college football mascot would you least like to try and fight? So uh, I asked our producers actually... Uh, shout out to Haley and Fitch, uh, who do a great job with our YouTube show here weekly. Without them, this would not be possible. I also threw this out to um, our producers on the the Twitter show, uh, Kenny and Shelby and Courtney. And I asked them, hey, what football mascot would I least want to get into a fight with? They don't have much uh, faith in me in fights, apparently, because the first <laughs> answer was, and I'm just reading this literally, the Syracuse orange was the first answer. So apparently I can't even beat up an orange. Uh, and then uh, Purdue Pete uh, was another one. So a boiler yeah, maker, no a big, strong strapping boiler maker. Now, um, I thought this originally was who is the mascot I'd most like to fight. Not, of course, the Duke Blue Devil <laughs> as a Maryland grad, the ACC pain. It's still I still feel the, the pangs of it in my body. Um, but it's, it's the one I least like to fight. I'll tell you exactly who it is. It's the Stanford tree. Uh, the Stanford tree is mysterious. I think it's a little a little bit nutty. Um, it looks kind of crazy. There might be a Dahmer living inside of it. I'm not sure. There's just too many variables involved in fighting the Stanford tree that I am staying away from that uh, Michael's craft project gone awry that is the college mascot. It's also a tree. And it is a tree. But I'm going to break my hand. Like, unless unless I'm, I'm training at the Kill Bill Dojo, I don't think I'm going to be able to break a tree yeah. with my hand. So, exactly. you know. You'll need an yeah. axe. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, yeah, thanks again to the producers for uh, really having a lot of faith in me on that one. Time now for our roundtable where we bring our friends, esteemed minds in the world of hockey to talk all things hockey uh, here on The Drop on ESPN. We got two great ones making their debuts on the show. Steve Dangle of Sportsnet, the Steve Dangle Podcast Network, which is uh, taking the world by storm, growing every single day. And also DJ Bean of NBC Sports Boston and listen to brunch as well. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Let's jump right in. Uh, Dangle, I'll start with you, my friend. We got to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, Why? we see the brand new. Well, I, good, <laughs> good question. 
great question. Uh, I see the background; it's all new. Um, here, here's my here's my here's my query to you, my friend. On a scale of one to the video you made after they lost to a Zamboni driver, how much Ooh. disappointment is there among the Leaf fans right now? Ooh, oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, I'm gonna go as bad as it is right now. I, th- I I'm gonna go five max. Dude, you lose to a Zamboni driver, you don't ever live that down. You don't ever live that down. The only way to live down anything is winning. DJ knows that, man. The Bruins got reverse swept by the Flyers. Does anyone remember that? No, they won the next year. No one cares. Uh, I brought that up in an interview with Patrice Bergeron, and he's like, the next year we won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> like, like, just immediately brings it up, and... uh It's convenient that we have this one amazing thing that cures everything. And we haven't seen it here since the sixties. So it's tough. It is true. I mean, lightning too, they get swept in the first round, most embarrassing season. Then next year they go and they win the cup. So if the Leafs can do that, if it ends with the Leafs winning the cup, then that's great. But I fear that probably doesn't end up happening. My thing with the Leafs right now is like, it's probably too early to be hitting any sort of panic button. Just like it's too early every September to say that like, this is the year for the Leafs. Have you ever considered not setting the bar that high to <laughs> inevitably dis- be disappointed? No. Like why, why would we ever be like, all right, let's finish seventh. <laughs> round and out. Like, like who's set a goal would I second it? round would be great. You can do yeah, that. Oh, that'd that be great. <laughs> yeah. No, like l- listen, I was not one of the people who said plan the parade. Like, listen, one one thing that this team has done well that I think is undeniable is over the last few years, they've performed well in the regular season. And I looked at the team that they brought into this season and I'm like, you know what? They could win the president's trophy, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes playoff time. Like they, they could win the league by 40 points. And, and they'd be playing, I don't know, the Blue Jackets in round one, and we'd still all be biting our nails down to the skin. Um, so it's, I, I had them, I was hoping for a trophy. I wasn't, I wasn't talking about the one that, that uh, looks like something you can drink out of. I don't even know what the president's trophy looks like. It's shaped like John Ziegler. Now, look, here's the question. Um, <laughs> here's the question. Do you, do you, are you like, is this fixable? Like you're in Toronto, everybody's talking about like fire Sheldon Keith, the whole thing. Like a, a, do you think they're going to fire the coach and B like what ails this team and can, can it be fixed? Listen, Masai Ujiri ruined everything for everyone mm. in, in Toronto. He made us think that anything was possible. Right. And they go out and they get Kawhi and he's unreal and they, they win a ring. And all of a sudden the city, uh, you know, got a, got a real taste for it um listen i hate the st louis blues for what they've done to the discourse if you find yourself in last place in january guess what you can win the stanley cup all of a sudden right um you know i i think the team that the leafs should maybe look to for inspiration uh unless you're sheldon keith is maybe the 2015 16 penguins who were bang average heading into the christmas season and then they ended up getting it together and obviously uh, winning a Stanley cup. I, I do think there's a, a couple things they could do that would improve them dramatically, but at the end of the day, like would it kill the team's best players to look at all at the same time? Mm. A good point. DJ uh, former coaches. Can you be paying at the same time is my only concern <laughs> with the I know. Sheldon Keefe thing. Uh, and like at I some know. point, but the thing is like with certain things, you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again, but sometimes repeating the thing you've done a million times actually is the right move. Like I'm going to cross sports for a second here, but the Detroit lions, they spent first round picks on wide receivers like every year and they became a laughing stock for it. But then one time the Megatron was on the board and they had right. a first round pick. So like, it's still the right thing to do to do that. So I, I, I just hope that if they deem Sheldon Keefe to be the problem, which I don't know if he is, but if they deem him to be the problem that they would actually follow that through and do it and not, not worry about the embarrassment, because I'll remind them, I say this with all the love in my heart, Steve, you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. You shouldn't be worried about embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, you don't know what it's like. All right. You don't know I what truly it's like. don't. I don't. He doesn't know what it's like. Exactly. You have no idea. He doesn't. The it's opposite. Every day torture. Every day you're sent, 
you know, meet Facebook memes from someone's 53 year old uncle and, uh, you know, or, or specifically wish I, sorry, 55 <laughs> and, you know, Say, I then, mean, it's synonymous. It's synonymous. And, really. the, 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 and the worst yeah. thing is I, I feel like a, a jerk saying this, but like no, they kind of fall into this Philadelphia 76ers thing where Ooh. somehow you don't gain lovable loser status. Like I root for loser teams and loser franchises. Famously, I'm an oil man. I got the Oilers jersey yep. back there. Love the Oilers. Want to see them finally figure it out. But I feel like so many people can't wrap their heads around rooting for the Leafs. And honestly, probably it is like the annual September watch out for the Leafs. Leafs win two games in a row. Really watch out for the Leafs thing. I I, I just feel like they haven't even gained the, the kind of lovable loser thing, which makes it all, I'm sure all the, the worst for you as a fan. Yeah. The, the one thing I would say for other fan bases is I think, uh, you know, the Toronto, the, the, the Leafs fan base is so big that whatever you want to see, you'll find. So if, if you want to see a bunch of Leaf fans talking about, ah, oh, it's our year, you know, playing the parade, you'll find them. Yeah. If you want to find a bunch of people who can barely make it through the day because they're so anxious and shaking at all moments, uh, you'll find them at youtube.com slash Steve Dangle. All one yeah, that, that one I like better. That one, I like that second group better. It's more Yeah, for sure. And I think better you can content. find ent entertainment from both. Last thing for both of you. Uh, this is something fun that we like to, uh, you can take this any way you want, whether it's something that you noticed this week or something you've been tracking or, or anything at all uh, in hockey. Tell us something we didn't know uh, before this segment began. Bean, let's start with you. Okay, so this is the worst. I texted Greg to clarify. I said, I, this can be anything we didn't I know. Said anything. He said, sure. I said, anything. It didn't have to be hockey. It could be anything. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough. So mine was going to be, the so the Brunch podcast is very big on fun facts, and we like to mm -hmm. kind of catch people off guard by maybe we book someone for an interview, and right off the bat, we ask them if they knew that Adam Duritz is singing background vocals on 6th Avenue Heartache by the Wallflowers. So I was going to go with something like that. Uh, but a hockey thing that people might not have known shoot uh yeah it doesn't have to be trivia it could be anything like something that you found interesting uh in the last game that you watched or even just something like you know like oh hey scoring's up you know like we all know that but like it could oh. be something as simple as that okay uh did you know that uh hampus lindholm is bobby orr because in the last game <laughs> i watched hampus lindholm won the freaking game with an end-to-end -end rush and beat Apparently the goal so. the glove side best thing i've ever Apparently seen in so. my life perfect 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 now we know. Uh, did you know that the best contract in the National Hockey League belongs to a goalie? Uh, contract. That's interesting. No one, no Lena one Solmark. likes this. No one likes this team. Lena Solmark isn't. <laughs> he's not. It's not a bad one. Um, but um, no one wanted to cheer for this team. I think because of the way they conducted business. But boy, they're off to a hot start. The Vegas Golden Knights locking Logan Thompson up to three years, 766 grand. That's ridiculous. Mm. They got a starting goalie who's one of the hottest to start the season for three quarters of a mil. Outrageous. Outrageous. Let, let, let me ask you, let me the, ask you a question. Uh, yeah. Go, go the ahead, rookie, rookie, The rookie Calder thing, I think. That, that's, that um, was where I was going to go. Like yeah. Vegas makes the playoffs, assuming they do. Logan Thompson is the front runner for the Calder, right? Well, yeah, last more, year with Michael Bunting, we found out the cutoff for the Calder is like 34. So, like, yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's in the cool. awards watch, in the awards watch we had today, like, we had we there was people that put Thompson up for the Vezina, but didn't have him for the Calder, which I thought was a kind of weird flex. Why? Um, oh, that, that, that's, that's what I miss most about voting is getting these weird principled stances that make no sense at all, but right. being like, okay, hear me out. I'm giving this guy a. Uh, I don't know. Like I'm giving this guy a, uh, a heart vote, but right. not a Norris vote. Can't do it. Right. <laughs> They've got their own award or whatever. It's all dumb. Uh, fun fact, uh, something I heard on the road that I found interesting. Everybody assumes and Arda, you assumed earlier, uh, that, uh, Patrick Kane to the Rangers is manifest mm -hmm. destiny mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the Artemi mm -hmm. Panarin connection. Did you know that Patrick Kane and Matty Barzell are buds and tight and he's in the Matty Barzell fan club and there's a thought a thought Arda that perhaps Patrick Kane may not be headed to Manhattan baby but may be headed to Belmont Park to play with the Islanders at some point mm. extremely Ooh. interesting I like mm. so that that was a great way of 
floating that because now you get to do the I reported it first if it happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this this clip will be cut and put on social media the second no. the news drops. Like I predicted this months ago. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's I going to this. happen, DJ. I'm not saying it's going to happen, DJ. But I'm saying that the, the, the talk is out there that Patrick Kane could go to the Rangers, the Islanders, the Leafs, the Capitals, the Panthers, the Lightning, somewhere in the Western Conference, somewhere in the Eastern Conference. The talk is happening, DJ, that that could happen. Patrick I'm Kane will it. remain in the NHL. I'm tweeting it right now. Yoink. <laughs> yeah. It's news you lose. Boom. Recording himself. Exactly. Per uh, this, this was a ton of fun, boys. Uh, definitely please come back. Uh, DJ Bean, you also have a cool podcast called Tomato Fights, where you pick uh, two movies with the same Rotten Tomato score and pit them against each other. That's also with our buddy Pete Blackburn. Uh, so that's cool. Definitely check out all DJ Bean's work and uh, Steve Dangles growing a podcast. I, you're actually getting outside of hockey too, right? Like I did I see that you hired a baseball guy as well or baseball basketball. person, I should say basketball, basketball. So like this wow. is growing, man. This is like a whole like sports wide podcast network. STPN baby, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're working on uh, getting to a hundred thousand subscribers and we're on, you, you know, those apps. Oh, we're on all those apps. Oh, definitely all check the out important apps. All those ones. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But ro road to a hundred K let's get there. STPN. Steve Dangle, DJ Bean. Great to have you both. Thanks for being on. Thanks to all of our guests here on The Drop. This is what you can look forward to on our ESPN family of networks on Thursday night tonight. You got the Bruins and Rangers on ESPN Plus and Hulu. That's an exclusive game. Also, that will be a doubleheader followed by the Panthers and Sharks on Friday. The Sabres and Hurricanes also on E Plus and Hulu. And then Sunday on ESPN, the Leafs and the Carolina Hurricanes. So a Hurricanes heavy week, a Sharks heavy week, uh, a big matchup. Two teams that dramatically won in overtime wish the Bruins and the Rangers facing off on Thursday. They both won on Tuesday. So yeah, a fun slate of games this weekend. That's going to be good stuff. That Bruins team, man, like we were just talking about juggernaut wagon, not like the devils. I mean, that's a different kind of juggernaut, but a good team nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for watching the drop. Don't forget to send us questions throughout the week. We really appreciate you watching the show. We'll catch you next week.